when we went best on best, both games came down to a last second shot, which tells me that there's not a tremendous separation um, because I, I kind of evened the teams out a little bit on both scrimmages and, and they ended up even. So it was good from that standpoint. Um, we, uh, we're not very big, and um, you, know, you can see that. But we're, we're fast, we're athletic, we shoot it pretty well. I think that we're deep, and um, I think I'm hoping that our style of play will bother opponents. But we've got a gang tackle, we've got a gang rebound, and um, if we can shore some of that up, I think we can be pretty, you know, I think we're, we're off to a pretty good start. Talk about what you're getting out of Anthony. He's playing with a lot of spirit. Awesome. Anthony, you know, is 6'7", 220 pounds, 225 maybe. He came here about 195, so he's put on about 30. It's all muscle. Um, he's just strong. He's a strong kid. Now, he looks like a man out here because we don't have very many big body guys. So a 6'7", 230 pound freshman should look, shouldn't be that physically imposing and wouldn't be on most SEC rosters. It's just that on my front line, Horace is a sophomore. Um, Dangelle's a redshirt freshman, Amperty's a freshman, and the only upperclassman on the front line is Laron Smith, and he was a, a Bethune Cookman last year. So our front line is, um, is is light. And so yeah, a guy like Amperty will definitely stand stand out, and, and he's, he's, he's gonna be a really good player. Bruce, how much have you seen Laron improve since he got here? Laron has improved, he has. Um, again, how much of it is, I don't have any a monster to go against him, but Laron can score. Um, and um, he's gaining confidence. I think he's gotten better. Um, he's, he'll, he'll be a factor. You know, losing Simeon and Tyler Harris, Jordan Granger, uh, Trayvon Reed even, I mean, that's four frontline guys that, you know, that could have, you know, that, that are gone, you know? And, and so once again, the front line is where we had the most to replace. But offensively, Dan Jail playing at the four spot, it's gonna be really hard for people to guard that. Um, and a lot of things that we do, so I mean, we scored. You know, we, we you know, we're scoring well over 100 right now in every in every you know 40 minute type scrimmage. You're playing a four guard lineup for sure. Mm -hmm. Three with a stretch. Yep. How much do you differentiate the two and the three? Because there's a lot of guys out there who played both the year ago. So how much of a yep. differentiation is there? There is no difference between our two and three positions. They're identical. They're both wing positions. The only difference might be. Um, you know which 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 guy would play in the back line of his own, uh, but the, you know one run on one side of the floor and one runs the other side of the floor. We have a trailing post and we have a big that goes to the rim. We have a point guard, so our wings are very interchangeable. T.J. Lang, then uh, Mustafa Heron, um, T.J. Dunnans, and Bryce Brown are those four wings. So we got four good players that are competing at those positions. They all do different things. Um, you know Dunnans is the best breakdown guy. His team seem to win because he just makes lots of plays. Lang's the best, you know, open shooter. Got the best size. He knows the defense the best. Um, all around, Mustafa does a little bit of everything, and, and it's got a physical presence, especially getting to the rim. Um, and, and Bryce is the best shooter, and probably the best on the ball defender. So they've all got elements like they can all play. And uh, I'm waiting for a little bit more separation from from them. I mean, I got a senior and a, and a freshman, and they're both really good. I mean, um, I mean, Jared Harper went on that other team, and they got down seven nothing or whatever it was at the end, and you know, Jared knocked down two threes late to win it. And he's just, he's just, uh, he's he's a special player. Um, and uh, and Ronnie, you know, on uh, as a senior and as a guy with experience, can really defend. He's really tough. Um, he wants to win. Ronnie wants to win. And so he'll either start or Jared will start. They're both going to play. They're both quick. And so I've got quick playmaking, ball handling guards. They're, they're very similar. Speak to how different that is, Bruce, because obviously last year in particular, once Kareem was gone, you had arguably you didn't have a point guard. Um, so no. you now have two right. extremely capable point guards. Yep. Different it's great having two point guards, and when T.J. Dunnans is your third point guard, and last year when he got healthy, he was our starting point guard. So, 
yeah, we've clearly upgraded the position, and and those guys are both real, real cerebral. They both understand, you know, how to play. But you could say we're playing 94 feet. We're changing defenses. We're we're trying to play fast. Um, playing fast there at the end when I and I and obviously during the course of the scrimmage, I ran them a couple times hard to try to create some uncomfortable situations for them where they're really fatigued. Um, but uh, we're, uh, they're going to go to class tomorrow. We got a, a good recovery lift, and then they're going to take they're going to have uh, three days off for fall break. As far as point guard goes, do you feel like Jared gives you something a little bit more defensively, maybe on the ball? Jared can make plays. He can make plays defensively and offensively. Not a lot of guys can make plays defensively, and he can't. He draws charges. He anticipates things. Ronnie can really pressure the basketball as a physical defender. Um, and and um, Jared, is, as he continues to get experience, he's, he, he sees he makes a lot of things happen. Bruce, in that first scrimmage, LeRon went 12-15 from the line. Tonight seemed a little bit more of a, of a struggle. I mean, what is a fair expectation for him from the free throw line? Well, LeRon Smith shot 25% from the foul line last year. And so what we did, what he, what he said was, you know, first of all, we've got to change everything. Yeah. And obviously, psychologically, we had issues. Um, you know, confidence is the history of past success, which he had none of, mm -hmm. and preparation, which he had a lot of. <laughs> So he asked me, he said, Coach, can I shoot my one-hander kind of like my floater from the foul line? I said, if you can shoot it better than 25%, you can. <laughs> so he's shooting about 70% in practice, yeah. and he just gets it, and he shoots his, his floater. I don't know what he was today, but I, was it one for two or two for four or whatever it was? I mean, actually, I think he's going to I think he's gonna make it when he goes to the line. Chris, how do you manage Mustafa? Hype around it because a five star football comes here. There's 80 guys. Right. It's happened before, but this has never happened before here. And I know I mean, you have to go back to the days of Clark here or something. Right. But it was just a different world. So right. How, right. how do you handle this? I, I think I can, it's going to be I can handle it because he can handle it. Mustafa Heron is a five star, not because he's a freak. He's a five star because he's a disciplined student athlete. He's a guy that's in here all the time at 6:30 in the morning. He eats right. He takes care of his body. He just, he, just, he, he trains. He's a, he, he's a hard worker, and he's a very good athlete. And he's, a, and, and he's, and, and he's got a great future in professional basketball, but not because he was just born with it. So therefore, Mustafa is going to take what he's going to take what comes. He's not expecting to come in here as a freshman and be a dominating five-star player as a freshman, because. But he, he wants to be one of the better freshmen in the league. Not necessarily by whatever numbers he puts up, but, but how we do and, his, and, and with his development. He's mature. He's he is team first. Uh, Mustafa Heron's going to play. Um, but he's not going to be a player that is going to, you know, lead us in scoring every night because he was a five star. And he doesn't expect it. There, might, there could be a night he does. But um, he's in a good place. And, he's, and, he's, and he knows he's on a team with some other good players. And um, I think our fans, too, won't, I mean, they won't, be, they won't be disappointed. But um, he's not going to try to prove his stars. It's just not who he is. I think the first line on him, Bruce, including by you, when you finally signed him, was he's just a pure scorer. Is he getting what you want to do defensively, or is that coming? It's slowly? coming. The defense is coming, you know, having guarding guards and things like that. That's, a, that's the, big, the biggest difference between high school basketball and college basketball is the defensive side, so he's getting that. Right. And, and then the other thing, too, he's a three-time state champion. He's been the best player on his team for the last four or five years, AAU and high school. You know, he's, and he's not necessarily our best player. He's one of our best players. And so that, but, he's, but he's handling the adjustment really well. He's not forcing things and letting it come to him. Bruce, when you think that this quote unquote game winning shot tonight and you go back to last year, the UAB game, is there any player on the team you have more confidence in at the end of the game than TJ Lang with the ball in his hands in that regard? Uh, Lang, if Lang can see it from three, he can make it, so that was pretty good. And um, and uh, he was the second option on play, but he was an option. He was the inbound passer. We actually tried to get the ball to the Jen Zill in the middle of the floor, and they, they took it away, kind of fouled him a little bit. We got it to LeRon, and LeRon pitched, I mean, pitched it right back to him, so it was kind of, it was pretty. Wouldn't it look good if the head coach lost that game, so. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you. Appreciate y'all being here.